рыбы. Entonces, so, 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 we will listen the report of our guest, Shuban Bazir, base, Shubham base, the Institute of Mathematical Science, Cherry India, with title. Save it star algebras of analytic functions. Please. Thank you, sir, for the introduction. <laughs> uh, so is the screen visible? <clears throat> yes, yes. Okay. So good afternoon to uh, all and thanks to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my work. So today I will be talking on sister algebras of analytic functions. So here we will see two types of sister algebras which are constructed on the proper subsets of the complex plane C. So this work also has the motivation uh, that comes from one of my previous talk in the same seminar series where Professor Vasilevsky has asked me a question and uh, it is the, this talk will answer that question along with something more. So this is the outline of my talk. So first we'll recall some preliminary notions which will be useful throughout the talk. Then we'll see a motivation to a problem. And then on the Bergman space over the upper half plane, we see the we see two types of integral operators. We see the boundedness of those two operators. And using these two operators, we construct the C star algebra of analytic functions on two different subsets of complex plane. So one is over the upper half plane where the C minus will be defining in short time, followed by the references. Uh, so uh, let xm view be, be, be a sigma finite major space and l2 of x denote the collection of all new measurable functions over x which are square integrable with respect to the major new. So it is a Hilbert space and it is a separable Hilbert space and the inner product will define in a usual sense. And if I consider a new measurable complex valued function f on x then its essential range consists of all functions a on c such that given any epsilon, the measure of this set is positive. And now if I consider L infinity of x nu to be collection of all functions for which this value is finite, then such a collection is again a Banach space with the norm given by the supremum of modulus of A where A is the A belongs to the essential range of F. Okay. Now, if we have a Banach space over a field C, so in throughout the talk, we will be considering all the Hilbert space over a complex field C. And on this algebra, uh, Banach space A, if we also have a multiplication operation such that it satisfies this condition, this is also known as a norm condition, then the collection A is known as Banach algebra. And in this Banach algebra, if we also have a unary operation star from A to A, which has the behavior with all the other members of this Banach algebra and the operations given by these five points, 
then such an operation is known as involution and the Banach algebra is known as involutive Banach algebra. Additionally, if this star operation also satisfies this condition with respect to the norm and the, uh, such that uh, this condition also known as C star condition, then the algebra A is known as C star algebra. Now, if the multiplication operation is commutative, then we call this Banach algebra to be commutative Banach algebra. And if we have a identity with respect to the multiplication operation, then we call it as a unital Banach algebra. So for example, we have that L infinity of X is a commutative sister algebra. So here the multiplication is the pointwise multiplication and the uh, involution operation, which is also known as adjoint is nothing but the com conjugate of the measurable function. And if we have a major space X with a sigma finite major space, and if we consider m to be a new measurable function on x and the such that, and if we consider dm to be the collection of all such functions in l2 of x so that the multiplication m uh, multiplication of f with m belongs to l2 of x then for all such elements in dm we can define an operator m sub z m from dm to l2 of x which takes f2 the multiplication of f by m. Now this operator is known as the multiplication operator and it is well known that this operator can be extended as a bounded operator on the whole L2 of x if and only if the uh, if and only if the function m coming from the L infinity of x. And if we consider the collection of all bounded multiplication operator then it forms a commutative C star subalgebra of b of l2 of x where b of l2 of x denote the collection of all bounded linear operators from l2 of x to itself moreover if we consider the map gamma between these two c star algebras then this is a star isometric isomorphism so even if we have l infinity of x to be a commutative c star algebra and if we have this m of l2 of x just as a set then with the help of this, we can impose a adjoint and a multiplication operation on these collections and we can make it a C star algebra. So this talk, we, like here what we have is, we have the function and we pose the C star algebra structure on the operators. Now in the remaining of this talk, we will do the, we will uh, use the reverse analogy. We will be having the integral operators and with the help of that, we get the C star algebra of function. Since we want a very special type of C star algebras, which consists of analytic functions, we need another notion of a very special Hilbert spaces known as reproducing kernel Hilbert space. So given a non-empty set X, and if F is a field, uh, which we will consider as a complex plane, then f of x comma f denote the collection of all functions from x to f and a non-empty subset h of this collection is said to be a reproducing kernel Hilbert space or an RKHS if it satisfies the following three properties. So first of all, it is a vector subspace of this collection. Then it has an inner product with respect to it, it is a Hilbert space. And the third one and very important property is for each x, the evaluation functional ex, which takes f to f of x is a bounded linear function. Now, since we are in a Hilbert space and the functional is bounded, by Ries representation theorem, we have that there exists a unique member, we denoted it by case of xx in h, such that the action of ex on f can be given by inner product of f with k. Now, this kx reproduces the value of every function at the point x so it is known as point reproducing kernel at x and using this we can also define a function k from x cross x to f given by k of x y is nothing but k y acting at x and it is known as reproducing kernel for the Hilbert space h for example if we consider the fox space f2 of cn which consists of all holomorphic functions in this Hilbert space L2, then it can be easily seen that it is a reproducing kernel Hilbert space and the reproducing kernel is nothing but the exponential function e power zw1. 
similarly if we consider upper half plane pi and with the product uh, with the lebesgue measure which is the restriction of a lebesgue measure of c 2 pi then the bergman space a2 of pi which consists of all analytic function in l2 of pi d mu is also a reproducing kernel hilbert space and here the kernel has the form minus 1 by pi z minus w bar whole square now since the fox space f2 of cn is a reproducing kernel hilbert space it has a very special property that every bounded linear operator on it can be uniquely represented as an integral operator with the integral kernel kt which has this form kt of zw bar is equals to t k sub x w acting as also this kt satisfies the condition 1 and now whenever we have such a kernel function entire function kt then uh, we can also see that such a kernel will be unique so in in fact this is a one to one corresponding between such entire functions and the bounded linear operators on the fox space f2 of c so now this motivates us to ask uh, the following question that can we characterize all the entire functions kt on c2 and c2 of 2a so that the integral operator tf given by 1 is bound so in attempt to answer this we consider a very special type of integral kernels so we start with the analytic function phi in f2 of cn and we consider the operators h phi so here the kernel p of z plus w e power z w is an entire function on c2a and associated to that we define such a operator and we could also show that given any fox element phi coming from the fox space the operator h phi is bounded if and only if there exists a essentially bounded function m in l infinity of rn such that m and phi and m satisfies the integral integral relation given by 3 moreover the operator norm of h phi is same as the essential supremum of m and something more is known for these operators like if we consider the collection of all these bounded operator h phi then it forms a commutative sister algebra in fact it is also a maximal commutative sister sub algebra of v of f2 of c n and this algebra is also coincide with the class of horizontal operators on the fox space which was studied earlier now uh, here we have said only about the operators hp but we did not say anything about the symbols phi so recently uh, in this paper the authors showed that if we collect uh, if we consider the uh, collection of all the symbols phi so that the hp is bounded then this collection m forms a sister sub algebra sister algebra with respect to the following structure so the linear structure is uh, clear it is inherited from the fox space line linearity of the fox space then the norm is nothing but uh, we can we uh, put the norm on these functions at is same as the operator norm of the uh, h suffix f now the adjoint is also clear like the adjoint when we take h phi and its adjoint then at h phi star is also sub some h suffix phi tilde so that phi tilde we can define as the adjoint and which is exactly this function but the more interesting thing was how to get the multiplication operation on this algebra so in literature we have various types of analytic function space of spaces of analytic functions but we can see that uh, most of them forms a banach algebra but not a sister algebra due to the convenient way of defining the multiplication operation which also satisfies the sister condition now motivated by this we consider the uh, bergman space a2 of pi over the upper half plane so here also uh, if we consider the bounded operator since it is a reproducing kernel hilbert space 
we have that every bounded linear operator has the form given by 4 where the kernel AT satisfies these two conditions. Now again we can ask the similar question that can we characterize such kernel so that the operator T is bound. In this direction uh, we consider the collection of all analytic functions on pi and associated to this pi we define the kernels function as k phi of z w bar is equals to 1 by pi p of z minus w bar and we consider only those analytic functions uh, for which this k phi satisfies these two conditions which were required here that the kernel functions will satisfy this. So this also says that with respect to first variable when we fix the second variable it is in the a2 pi and with respect to the second variable conjugate uh, by fixing the first variable it is again in a2 of pi. So when we consider analytic functions with the kernel k phi satisfying these two properties we formally define the integral operator given by phi. So these two conditions on the vertical operator uh, on the operator v phi also guarantees that even though these operators may not be bounded operators on a2 of pi but they are densely defined operators because the span of all the point reproducing kernel will be in the domain of this v phi and we could show that given phi coming from this collection the operator v phi is bounded on the a2 pi if and only if there exists an l infinity of uh, there exists a function sigma coming from L infinity of R plus such that P and sigma are related by equation 6. And moreover, we have that the operator norm of V phi is same as the essential supremum of sigma. And what else we know is that if we consider the collection of all these bounded operators V phi, then it forms the maximal commutative system of algebra of D of A2. And in fact, this collection coincide with the collection of all vertical operators on A2 of pi. So the studying these operators V5 has two advantages. First of all, we were able to answer the converse of this question for a special type of uh, kernels AT. And the second thing is we were able to provide integral represent, more concrete representation for vertical operators which were earlier, which were defined earlier. Uh, and since uh, we have a very nice class of operators, which are like Toplitz operators, Henkel operators and composition operators. So these operators are much widely studied. The another, one reason for this is that they have a representation. So here, since we have the representation for vertical operators, now some more things can be studied with the help of these operators. Similarly, now we consider a set C minus, which consists of all uh, complex numbers, uh, which are uh, minus this positive real line. And for such function, we define the kernel function K phi as this. So to define this P of Z by W bar, we need that the domain of this function should be at least C minus this. And then we consider omega suffix angular ang to be the collection of all analytic function phi on C minus such that the kernel function k phi has these two properties. Again, we need these two properties for the densely for the operators to be densely defined. And for such uh, symbols, we define the operators a phi given by equation 7. And we could also show that given a P coming from this collection, the operator A phi is bounded if and only if there exists a sigma coming from L infinity of R such that P and sigma are related by equation A. And the operator norm of A phi is same as the essential supremum of sigma. So as we have seen in the vertical case, here also we get that the collection of all these bounded operators A5 forms a maximal commutative sister algebra. And this 
in this case it coincide with the collection of all angular operators on a2 of pi and where we say a bounded linear operator t to be an angular operator if it commutes with the unitary operator d suffix h which are also known as dilation operators and they are defined by d suffix h of f as this for all h greater than 0 okay so so far we have seen two types of integral operators on the upper half plane but now we will see that what can we say about the collection of all phi so that this phi is bounded and the collection of all phi for which the operator v phi is bounded and now with the help of these integral operators we will try to find the multiplication operator and a suitable adjoint operation so that the collection of those symbols becomes a sister algebra. Okay, so let us recall that uh, in the vertical case, we consider the collection of all those symbols, analytic functions, for which these two set these two properties are true for every z and w. And if I consider omega one to be all those symbols in this collection for which the associated v phi is bounded. Now we also know from the pre uh, boundedness of v phi that such a phi has this integral relation for with respect to some m coming from l infinity of r plus. So our aim is to define a uh, suitable involution operation, multiplication operation, and a norm on this omega one so that it becomes a commutative system. Okay. So now, if we start with any m1, m2 coming from L infinity of R plus, and if we take m to be the multiplication of m1 and m2, then we can define phi as this, and phi j's for each j coming equal to one or two, one and two as this integral. Then we get that u of z minus w bar is nothing but this integral. So this is easy to verify because we have v phi uh, which has this integral representation but v phi is we also know that v phi is exactly v phi 1 composition with v phi 2. Now using the definitions of v phi 1 and v phi 2 we can end we will end up with this form. Now the kernel here has the same properties as that of p but we already seen that whenever v phi has the kernel with such a property the kernel should be unique and that uniqueness will help us to imply uh, will help us to show that the p of z minus w bar is actually this integral because in general for a arbitrary phi 1 and phi 2 coming from the collection omega 1 it is difficult to evaluate this integral but due to the uniqueness uh, here things get easier and we can conclude that okay this phi of z minus w bar should be this integral. In fact uh, here there is uh, nothing about the uh, considering phi 1 first and phi 2 second we can also consider phi 2 of z minus eta bar and then phi 1 of eta minus w bar because we know that the collection of all this v phi is a commutative sister algebra. So this is the result which says that uh, there is uh, we are not going to lose anything if we interchange p1 and p2. Now using the relation, using this relation, now we will try to get the multiplication form on omega 1. So we show that given p1 and p2 coming from omega 1, uh, we can define a multiplication operation given by this and with respect to this multiplication operation the collection omega 1 is a closed subset so the proof is uh, is mainly based on uh, using the identity theorem and some properties of the domain space so since phi 1 and phi 2 coming from omega 1 we have that there exists uh, essentially bounded functions on R plus M1 and M2 such that these phi j's has this relation. 
this comes from the characterization of v51 and v52 and from the previous lemma we have that uh, phi satisfies this relation and now uh, this phi is nothing but again the integral form we can give where the multiplier is now m1 into m2 now what we can do here is uh, we consider z equal to w equals to i a by 2 where a is greater than 0 and with this we can see that phi of i a is exactly this integral and here we can do the change of variable n eta going to eta by 2 because since it is not taking us outside the domain and we will end up with this nice form and uh, what we can see is the left hand side function phi is also an analytic function and the right hand side integral also gives an analytic function so the identity theorem now says that we can also consider i replaced by a general z coming from phi and this implies that we have this phi 1 uh, multiplication with phi 2 is exactly phi now since phi comes from the domain omega 1 we get that the multiplication operation is closed and we can also see that uh, in this omega 1 the identity element is nothing but the phi naught of z equals to 1 by z so this also says that uh, Uh, like in the fox space setup we consider that the multiplier phi is not only analytic but it can also coming from the same space but here we are we are losing something we are losing the symmetry that and that uh, shows says that we cannot assume that the symbol functions are coming from the space a2 of phi uh, in fact the identity element this 1 by z square can be easily seen that it is not in a2 of y, but it is an analytic function. Okay. So the new multiplication formula, although it is very difficult to evaluate that formula for uh, arbitrary elements p1, p2 coming from the symbol class omega 1, here we uh, try to verify this formula for a very special type of operators. Uh, special type of symbols so for j equals to 1 comma 2 and hj is positive uh, we consider phi j is given by this and uh, using integration by parts or using the fact that this is the uh, symbol associated to the horizontal operator h sub x hj we can conclude that this phi j is exactly equal to minus 1 by pi z minus hj square. Now for these features, if we consider this multiplication p1 times p2, uh, then what we can see is uh, here if we uh, substitute the value of this part and this part as these things, and if we use the change of variable eta going to twice of eta, the inside integral, we can write it in terms of the inner product between the reproducing kernels. And because of this, at the end, we will end up with uh, the phi1 into phi2 is exactly minus 1 by pi z minus h1 plus h2 whole square. and this is belongs to omega 1 because this symbol correspond to the horizontal operator h suffix h1 plus h2 so combining the multiplication form now we give the sister algebra structure on this collection omega 1 so most of the operations are coming from the integral operators like uh, the norm comes from the operator norm of v5 they are given like this then the adjoint again comes from the fact that if we take the adjoint of v5 then the associated p tilde for that star operation is this p of minus z bar full bar 
and the multiplication formula what we had seen earlier. Whereas the linearity follows directly and uh, it can be seen. Now, uh, explaining the things for the vertical case was a bit easier, whereas for the angular case, much it, things becomes more complicated with respect to handling the integrals. But uh, what we could see is, uh, if we consider the these symbols, and if I consider omega two to be all those symbols for which the a psi is bounded, then these symbols has this structure. And what we could show that uh, this collection forms a commutative Cisner algebra. So it is a vector subspace of analytic functions on C minus is clear. The norm on the elements in omega 2 is nothing but the operator norm of A suffix psi. And the adjoint again comes from the adjoint of the operator A psi, the symbol associated to the adjoint of A psi. And the multiplication form is given by this integral. So here, what we can see is these adjoints are not is not very direct. Like one cannot think directly that uh, we can think of that joint on this kind of collection. Even the collection is very non-trivial. Since we know the integral representation of angular operator, we could con consider this collection. And everything else comes from the fact that uh, the collection of all ASI forms. Are maximal community is this multiplication form suitable multiplication form so here uh, then these two sister algebras of analytic functions the first one is in this case we can see that the inside uh, in psi one we have the geometric mean of z and eta bar uh, z and one by eta Whereas in psi 2, we have the geometric mean of z and eta. Whereas if we go to the vertical case, here we have the algebraic mean of z with minus eta bar and the algebraic mean of z with eta. Yeah. Now, uh, there is one more thing which uh, we have to, I have to point out that uh, in case of angular operators, although the angular operators were defined on the domain pi, but we can see that the sister algebra, what we had given at omega 2, this defines on, on a different color, different domain. It consists of one. analytic functions on C minus and the previous uh, collection of sister algebra what we had seen that is that gives a sister algebra of analytic functions on the upper half plane but what we have is the upper half plane and the unit disk are biholomorphically I mean there is a biholomorphic map between the upper half plane and the unit disk so that the sister algebra what we had seen earlier can be transferred to the unit disk and which also answers one of the question asked uh, one of the questions asked in this paper by the authors for the existence of such a sister algebra of entire uh, analytic function on the unit disk. Now, what remains to show is uh, although we consider the collection omega 1. Uh, which is a close which is close with respect to the new multiplication operation but there can be a bigger subset of analytic functions on pi which is also a close subset of uh, uh, which is also close with respect to the new multiplication operation so it is natural now to ask can we characterize the maximal subset omega 1 dash which contains omega 1 and which is contained in of analytic functions on pi such that it is close with respect to the first multiplication operation. 
and a similar question can be asked about the maximality of the collection omega 2 dash which contains omega 2 and it is containing the analytic functions on c minus which is closed under this multiplication formula. So these are the references. So in the first reference, uh, we studied the horizontal operators, the representation of horizontal operators. In the second paper, we give the integral representation for vertical operators. And in the third one, we give integral representation for angular operators. And in, in this paper, uh, with the help of these two representation, uh, I was able to give the characterization for C star algebra of analytic function on the proper subsets of C. And this is the paper where the C star algebra of entire functions, which are coming from the representation of horizontal operators were studied. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shukran. It's a very interesting uh, topic, this, because you are associating an operator to the to the function, and these operators are, are commutative, commute between them. Uh, yes. That's, that's very, very interesting. Uh, any questions or remarks? Well, I, I think there are no questions, but uh, I, I find this very interesting, Shuham, uh, because um, you somehow, well, you related these uh, functions to these vertical operators or the, uh, the angular operator that, uh, um, well, they were studied before by Professor oh, Wasilewski. Yes, yes. yes. And, and you give a special multiplication to the function that is uh, uh, that makes them uh, a sister algebra because when when i saw your your um abstract uh, i i never thought you could find a, a multiplication that made uh, these functions a sister algebra because they are well it's complicated but uh, these multiplications are are nice and uh, we give a, a very nice structure to these functions. So thank uh, you very much for your talk. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for the opportunity. Well, if uh, I, if someone wants to say something or have any comment. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shukham, for your talk. It's very interesting. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next week, uh, we won't have um, a seminar because there is going to be a talk in the colloquium. Uh, Wolfram Bauer is, is giving a talk, so I will send the information to connect to the, to the by Zoom to, to this conference. So I uh, I will send them the information next week, uh, and um, so see you see you next week in the colloquium. See you. Bye. Thank you, Shukham. Uh, bye bye man. So I, I can bye. log out now.